Hi friends, welcome. This is a Sunday restorative practice I'm offering this week to support you, really to support us, <laughs> me too. And going along with this week's theme of Asteya, uh, the tenet of non-stealing and generosity. And the aspect of Asteya that I think makes the most sense <laughs> that I want to focus on for this practice is this sense of non-comparison or if you want to put it in a more positive language um, acknowledging and being grateful for what we have and that goes along with non-stealing and generosity because if we are really aware of what we have, we're less likely to take more than we need, right? And we're more likely to give generously of ourselves and of what we have, if we recognize that we have enough. Which always sounds simple enough. <laughs> but as an intentional practice, it does take some, some focus. Right? Some persistence and reminding yourself to keep coming back to that sense of gratitude and acknowledgement for what you have. And in a restorative practice like this one, it's just uh, gratitude for these bodies right, and what they do for us, how they hold us and hold us up and let us move forward in this world. And that's what I want to focus on. Yeah. So that's what I'm offering <laughs> as intention. But as always, um, you're here for your own reasons. Follow that, move in that way. I'd like to suggest for this practice um, two blocks or support sort of in this shape of a block. Um, actually, I will say either two blocks and a blanket or towel to put on top of them so that they're just not so hard, like the edges are not so harsh. Or if you just have a bolster, like a yoga bolster or a super firm pillow, um, that'll do as well. So I always wanna give you that heads up on um, props that will be helpful because we have a few moments to settle in, maybe gather what you need. Maybe it's lighting a candle or opening a window or adding a layer. Really treating yourself as a friend, caring for this body, mind, spirit. As we tune in.
the width resonance and also quiet. Tune toward the way your breath moves through your body. And then allow your body to move however it needs to. Whatever stretching, reaching, rolling needs to happen. We'll move ourselves toward a tabletop shape And if your wrists are feeling sensitive today and you want to support them in this tabletop shape, since we have this um, blanket or towel, it's good to just um, fold it pretty small uh, and put that just under the heels of your hands. Yeah, it's just going to reduce that angle or rather Make the angle bigger <laughs> of your wrists, yeah? But as you need, moving in this shape a little bit just to arrive. Already you might notice the way that your spine can move, right? For as integral as it is in our bodies, for it to be as flexible as it is, for it to move in so many different ways, is pretty amazing. Just having a little bit of gratitude, even if your spine doesn't move all the ways today, right? However, it does move. And then find relative stillness, a space where you feel supported. It's still, you know, malleable. Nothing is rigid in this practice. And pressing or shifting some weight to your left hand. Let your left elbow stay a little bit soft. So again, it's not rigid. And then peel your right elbow or your right fingers up toward the ceiling. And find an inhale across your whole wingspan. Press down through your left hand, reach through your right. And then thread your right arm along your rib cage over to the left with an exhale. And then just as you're here, I'm going to stay here for just a second. Think about, sort of think in your, your mind's eye, whether you might rather have this left elbow down on the floor. Yeah. So we'll come to reset, bring your right hand next to your left. And you might just try that out. Bring your left elbow down to the floor or again to this little pad of a blanket. Your left hand is also on the earth. And you can always undo this if you decide it's not right. But again, press down now through your left forearm, kind of taking your weight up out of your left shoulder. Roll your right ribs back and reach your right elbow or your right fingers up toward the sky. Find a breath in. And with your breath out, slide or thread your right arm through to the left. And you can stay right here. Yeah, or begin to sort of floss open a couple of times if that feels good always in this restorative practice especially at the beginning i'm going to give you some opportunities to move in case you need that but know that it's never uh, required right I'm just giving you that option in case you need a little movement before you can really be still but the option two to stay either way you've got about Three more breaths, so you might be staying. You might even bring your right temple down onto the earth. Or you might be moving a little bit more. Yeah, open your right arm to the sky and then thread through to the left. And send a last breath between your shoulders, really clearing out, noticing that space that you have. And then give weight to your left hand, 
So bring yourself back up. Bring your right hand to the earth. Bring your left hand to the earth. And again, if there's just a little bit of movement that feels good, let that happen. Yeah. And then from relative stillness, shifting your weight to the right to peel your left arm open. And again, it could just be your left elbow to the sky. That might be enough. Or you're reaching your left fingers up. And use an exhale to thread your left arm over to the right, just right along your rib cage and pause. And again, just sort of examine or explore with your mind's eye that possibility of bringing your right elbow down. It might seem really different on this side, so let it be different if it is. And then we come back through center to reset. And you could either um, bring your right elbow down or not. Yeah. In either case, press down to sort of bring your shoulder away from your ear, your ear away from your shoulder. Roll your left ribs back to again, open your left arm to the sky and use a breath in. Use a breath out to thread your left arm through to the right. And then again, it's your choice whether to keep uh, sort of flossing open to the left and then to the right or you can thread through and pause here. Maybe bringing your left temple to the floor. You could walk your right hand forward a bit more rather than keeping your elbow down. It's up to you. But again, just notice where your thoughts go. And if your mind goes straight to areas of tension or areas of perhaps injury, old injury, stiffness. Can you instead, or in addition, bring awareness to the spaces that feel supple, the spaces where breath can move, and just notice where you have space. Two or three more breaths, just as you are here. Then again, give weight to your right hand to bring your left hand to the earth. Stretch or move around in any way that you need to. You'll walk your knees over to the left side of your mat and let your right hip fall to the right. So your hands are still facing the front of your mat, like downward facing dog, and your thighs are sort of um, perpendicular to your arms. Yeah. You might walk your hands in a bit, so a little taller, if that feels good or not. Yeah, and again, um, if this feels like already it's too far to reach, you can also bring um, ear blocks under your hands. That brings the floor closer to you. Yeah. So from where you are, we're already in a little bit of a twist. Yeah. Press down through your hands. Feel yourself get a little taller. And imagine this left side getting a bit longer. So your left hip drops back and down a bit because this right side is already probably feeling pretty long. Yeah. But can the left side also be long? Draw your right ribs back. Just feel it a little bit longer in your spine with the breath. And then as you exhale, come forward, either walk your hands forward. You might come onto your elbows, especially if you have the support of the blocks here. You can, um, you can even bring your elbows wide and bring support under your head. We're just giving ourselves a little space on the left side. And as you fold forward, can you again 
feel that same spaciousness on all sides of your body. Like whatever space, whatever length is there, notice it. So much of gratitude, so much of abundance practice is just noticing what you have. However far your head is from the earth, do try and just let it be soft and heavy, right? So if you're really tall, just let your chin drop. Again, let your elbows be soft if your arms are long, just so there's not that rigidity there. Breathe into the space that you have. Just a couple more breaths in this one. And then press into your hands to walk them back in, to sort of rise back up off the mat. From here, coming back toward a tabletop shape, so adjust your supports as you need to. Coming back toward a tabletop shape, walk your knees to center. And really just to uh, get a little bit of movement in this right hip because it was a little bit uh, crunched, it <laughs> can get a little bit crunched under there. So from here, you'll extend your right heel back, press through your heel to pull forward through your crown. And then again, you have to be a little bit, trust your intuition a little bit here of what feels good. You can just sort of sweep your right leg to the right and to the left. Um, I think it feels really good to make some circles, but if that feels like too much effort, <laughs> then you might not, that might not feel good today. But just get some movement into your right hip. If you're making circles, go both directions. This, by the way, is like as tall as we're gonna get and as much as we're gonna move <laughs> in this practice. And then when you're ready, Kind of coming back to this center tabletop shape. Walk your knees to the right. Let your hips fall to the left. And again, just check this sort of this alignment that your hands, your fingers point forward like they would in Aramukha Svanasana. Your thighs are perpendicular to your arms. So you're already in a bit of a twist. So again, if it feels better to have support under your hands, or to bring the floor closer to you, do that. If it feels better to walk your hands forward a bit more, do that. We're just finding some space in this shape for a moment before we fold. And as we're tall here, again, the left side of the body is probably pretty long. Could you feel how much space is on the right side? Give that some breath, some attention. Keep drawing your left ribs back, your heart forward, and then eventually begin to fold down toward the earth any amount. Notice length in your spine, space between your shoulder blades. Notice where you feel supported also. Just about five more breaths in this shape. Release what you can, relax what you can here. No 
rush. But as you're ready, bring your hands back to earth. Walk them in a little bit so you sit tall. Reset, find the length of your spine. And then give weight to your hands so you could lift your hips and walk your knees back to center. Then again, extend your left leg back. Find some space all the way along the back line of your left side and then some movement in your left hip. So again, that could be just sort of dragging your toes on the floor out to the left and over to the right. You could make big circles, bending your knee, picking your leg up off the floor. And again, you might need less or more on this side than you needed on the other side, right? Our, the right side of your body and the left side of your body might have had like a really different day <laughs> or a really different week. I mean, they perform different tasks for a lot of us. Eventually, we come back to center. Our last shape sort of in this orientation to the floor is our Anahata Asana, our puppy pose. So I will suggest at least having the blocks nearby, right? The supports nearby if you need them. So we'll play with a couple different versions here. So we're in a tabletop shape. Maybe your hands are on the blocks or on your little pillow, of, um, the heels of your hands, just on the edge of the support. And from here, whereas often we would press down into the earth and puff up the space between your shoulder blades, here we want to sink that space, surrender that space toward the earth, so that the space between your shoulder blades sort of hollows out and your head heavy as well. There's just a little bit of support, a little bit of strength at the belly, at the center, just to sort of keep things together. And then begin to walk your hands forward or bring your elbows down onto the blocks. But again, you want to keep sinking your rib cage through your collarbones, through your shoulders down toward the earth. And again, always free to sort of readjust if it becomes too intense or if you feel like you want a little more eventually. Yeah. But let your hips stay stacked right over your knees. And again, the opportunity, if you like, to keep walking your hands forward. You might eventually bring your chin or your chest to the earth. But again, bring your awareness toward the space that's there, the support that's there, the mobility that you have, whatever it is. Just about three more breaths where you are. Soften what you can. Notice where you're supported. And then begin to walk your hands back in. Back to this tabletop shape one more time. So again, if there's any cat and cow and movement, and always too, if you're someone if you really love downward facing dog, if that feels really refreshing and good to you, um, this is your opportunity <laughs> in this practice to find that shape. If that shape is a lot of work for you and doesn't feel great, uh, I don't recommend it right now. Yeah. But from our tabletop shape, 
We're about to sort of reorient um, the front body up toward the ceiling. But first, setting up some props. So um, if you've been in this shape before, it's a supported fish shape. Um, you're going to bring your blocks to like a T shape on the mat. So one goes, or, or again, if you're using a bolster, you'll just put your bolster um, lengthwise, right? But um, one block goes lengthwise, and it's going to go just kind of below, like between your shoulder blades, a little bit below there, right? Kind of at your weight, like the, the back of your waist. And this second block is for your head. And like I said, I think it's really nice to put um, a little blanket or some softener on top of these blocks so the edges aren't digging into you. Yeah. Okay. Once you have that set up, you're going to turn around and lay yourself onto the blocks. And again, if you're not doing this all the time, <laughs> you may need to adjust the blocks from where you placed them, and that's fine. You'll want to test out too whether it feels good to extend both legs or whether you'd rather um, bend your knees and keep your feet planted on the earth. But you'll want to feel as if your heart space is supported. So the same space that was sinking toward the earth in that Anahata Asana is now held up. So the same thing's happening in your body in a different orientation to the floor. A couple more options and then we'll just stay here for a little bit. You can let your hands fall open. You can bring your hands onto your body. Or, and this is usually a little more intense, you can bring your arms overhead, your hands to rest on the floor. Or wide, straight out from your shoulders. Yeah? So find what feels most productive most uh, appropriate to your intention and how you feel today. And we're just going to be here for a little bit. So again, just notice where you feel supported. where you feel spacious. How your breath moves. Just a few more breaths here. Soften what you can. As you're ready, bend your knees if they're not to plant your feet on the floor. I'm 
Roll your knees to the right and begin to roll off of the blocks over toward the right, onto your right side. So you might still be able to rest your head on that block that was there, or you might bring your right arm under your head if you'd rather, yeah, to support your head, or bring a pillow under your head. <laughs> You're here to support yourself. But be on your right side. And for most of us, naturally, when we lay on the right side, there begins to be a little bit of compression on the left side. And just the way that your hip sort of rides up. So if that's happening for you, imagine just drawing your left hip away from your left shoulder just enough so that you feel there's some space on this left side. And then I'm gonna bring this block that was under my head. Again, support your head with your arm if you would like to. I'm gonna bring this block between my knees, I'm sort of between my thighs, just so that this left hip has an, uh, more of a, is more parallel to the floor. So my leg isn't going down, it's just kind of almost straight out from the floor. Uh, it's the most relaxed position for your hip to be in. <laughs> yeah. So letting it be there a moment just to be supported. And I'll sort of sort of blueprint that plane, right? Where your hip is, your thigh is parallel to the floor. Draw your knee toward your chest a little bit, and you're probably gonna lose that block, that's okay. So hold on to your left ankle, or to reach in that direction if that's not happening. I'm gonna hug your left thigh toward your chest, any amount. You'll feel a little bit of compression, and you wanna breathe into that compression. So breathe into the left side, and then exhale, any effort softens. One more time, breathe in, find that compression. Release any effort, exhale. And then I'm gonna kick the left heel back. And if you can keep holding onto your shin, cool. Most of us will lose the grip and then find it again behind you. And again, try not to let your knee dip down, keeping your thigh parallel to the floor. And we're just finding um, some stretch across the front of your left thigh, the front of your left hip. So we'll just be here a few breaths, not gonna stay too long. Feel as if your left knee is drawing not so much back, but down toward the bottom of the mat. Take one more breath in. And then as you exhale, release your left foot. Let your left knee stack on the right. Don't worry about the block unless you really want to put it back in there. I'm going to move the second block now that was behind my heart. Yeah. So if you could do that without moving, awesome. Um, or you might prop yourself up to move that block. And that's so that I can roll onto my back. And we'll keep working with this left leg for a minute. So knees stay bent. Plant your right foot. And again, draw your left thigh in toward your belly. You could hold on with both hands now if you like. And again, just notice where there's space to breathe. Notice where there's some mobility as you have the option to make some circles with your left hip, rolling it around here.
And then you'll cross your left ankle over your right thigh. Let your left knee, your left hip really, your thigh rotates out to the left. Because this isn't really about your knee. <laughs> the knee is sort of the end of this process. But for me, it feels like my knee is sort of pressing out and up. And this might be enough. You could stay right here. If you want just a little bit more, you can bring a block under your right foot. Right? That gives you just a little bit more compression, a little bit more stretch into this left hip. You could, of course, put your right foot up on a wall or a chair, couch or something, or you can draw your right thigh in closer to your belly with your hands. Any of the above, any or none of the above. Stay and breathe. And notice. without comparing to anyone else or any other version of yourself. Just right now, what do you have? How does the breath move through you? And what can you soften? Sometimes that has to do with generosity too, right? Not gripping, holding on so tightly, but allowing energy to move through, to move beyond us. It's about five more breaths here. And you can always stay for longer if you like. But when you're ready, let your right foot find the floor if it's not on the floor. Let your hips find the floor. Just find that same sort of preparatory shape and let it just be for a moment. Then unhook your left ankle, both feet on the floor. Bring your feet a bit wider. And if that block is down there, make sure you get it out of the way. Bring your feet about as wide as the mat, or if you're not using a mat, a little wider than your hips. And find a, a little side to side windshield wiper action with your knees. Again, your knees are sort of pointing out away from your heart. Oops picking up the curtains. So it's not so important to be pressing your knees toward the floor, but more lengthening toward the bottom of the, the end of the mat. Maybe once more to each side. Come back through center. Take a block with you. Actually, let's do the opposite order on this side, just so we can stay here a bit longer. Press through your left foot, draw your right knee, your right thigh in toward your belly. Take a moment in compression, breathe into the right side of your belly, your chest, and let that go. And the option to stay or to find some circles 
or just to draw your left knee a bit wider and hold it there. Yeah, more toward your shoulder than toward your heart. And then as you feel ready, cross your right ankle over your left thigh. Let your right thigh rotate out. Your knee draws out and up. And see if you could settle equal weight into both sides of your pelvis on the earth. And then again, you might stay here. You could step your left foot onto a block or onto a wall or piece of furniture. Or you could hold onto your left thigh and draw it closer to your chest. But if you find that your chin is lifting a lot or your shoulders are getting tense, you probably went a little too far. <laughs> it shouldn't be about your shoulders, your neck, your chin. So soften what you need to or back off as much as you need to so that your shoulders can be easeful across the floor. Your chin stays down so the back of your neck is long. So that there is ease in this shape. Another thing we can notice and be grateful for. About five more breaths here. Allow the breath to move through. No need to hold on to any of it. your left foot to find the earth if it's not already there and take a pause and then unhook your right foot back to the earth gonna roll onto your left side now bringing a block with you so that you can put it again between your knees Support your um, head with your left arm if you like. And really we're just looking for this um, angle of your right thigh being parallel with the ground and your right hip drawing away from your right shoulder so that there's some space on this right side. And I'll just add for me, instead of letting my right arm really fall to the right, just because that kind of closes off my chest, I sort of let my right fingertips stay on the earth and let my elbow lift just to stay open. From here then, again, sort of remembering this angle of your leg, you can let the block go. as so you draw your right thigh in toward your chest And then release to draw your heel behind you and reach back for your ankle. And you're pressing your right knee, not down toward the floor, but like whatever wall <laughs> is at the other end of your mat, that's where you're pressing into. 
Allow your breath to move. Two or three rounds of breath, not here for long. Release your left foot. Finding uh, one more twist here. So it might feel good to, again, bring this block in between your knees. You may not need it. But as you're here, begin to roll your right ribs to the right. Reach your right arm out to the right, and you'll find this supine twist. Still, your right hip draws down away from your right shoulder to give you space. You might be resting your head, your face toward the ceiling, or your chin might roll to the right as well. Notice where there's space, where there's support, where there's ease. Five breaths, as if your whole body could breathe. as long as you like on this side. We're just gonna roll to the other side. So you might use a hand to support this block just so you don't have to squeeze and hold on to it. Roll your knees through center and then over to the right. Roll your ribs, your left ribs to the left. Your left hip down away from your left shoulder and your left arm out to the left. Maybe your chin goes that way too, maybe not. See what you feel on this side. Five more breaths, full, whole body breath. And again, feel free to stay longer if you need more time. We're coming back through center. You can release the block now. Bring your knees through center. If it feels good, you could find that little tick-tock again, side to side. Begin to hug both knees in toward your chest. You could um, hold on to your shins if you like, or hold on to your feet. You could stay here or roll a little bit around, sort of massaging your sacrum area. We're moving now toward stillness. But if there's anything else you need, any other movement, any other shapes, any other um, supports, Give yourself what you need. To move toward stillness. It's 
to move toward release. And to notice again that you're fully supported here. To notice, be present to your wholeness. There is nothing that you lack as a being. You are already whole as you are. Supported and connected by the greater whole. Offer yourself this moment. Receive it with joy. The more we can receive with joy, the more we can give with joy. Often what you can. Release what you can and be here.
Notice again that you're supported. That breath moves freely. To be received and offered freely. Know that in this breath, in this constant giving and receiving, we're connected. There's this space, this resonance between us, always. We'll honor it with the sound of OM, sound that honors what came before comes next and also this moment honors the wholeness we find it three times together feel free to stay low feel free to join in or not but be with it a breath in out and toward own a breath in. that resonance to stay in your awareness to remind you of your wholeness our interconnection that allows us to give more and receive more and notice what we have it's from this place of resonance where we're the same i bow to you Sending love and gratitude as always. Thanks for taking this time um, with yourself and in community. If you've got questions or feedback, reach out. Otherwise, be well. We'll talk to you soon. <laughs>